In this brief tutorial, we will go over the basic usage of the Plus One service tool. The service tool is a vital part of the Plus One system. It has three main purposes. You can use it to download new applications that you've created and guide to a programmable device, typically a controller or a display. You can see signal values on the controller, for instance the input voltage on a multifunction input pin and you can read and adjust parameters in your application. Viewing and changing signal values can be either done through simple basic tabular log and parameter pages which are created in the service tool or you can create more complicated and intuitive advanced pages. Pages created for this purpose are called diagnostic files and carry the P1D extension. In order to use the service tool you'll first need an appropriate gateway. This can be either a Danfoss CG150 or a Danfoss display which can act as a USB device with an appropriate cable. You can also use another manufacturer's gateway as long as it follows the RP1210B API. You also need a correctly set up CAN bus that you can connect to, one of the most important components of which is the terminating resistors. You can open the service tool in a number of ways, either by clicking on the desktop shortcut, selecting it from the tools drop down menu within guide, or by clicking on any file with a file extension associated with the service tool, such as P1D or LHX. Make sure that you're connected to devices on the CAN bus before you try to start using the service tool. Look for a green connected ball at the bottom of the service tool program. If you don't see it, start by checking the following things. Make sure you're in online mode, as the service tool also has an offline mode. Check your baud rate, verifying that all the other devices on the bus are using the same baud rate. Verify that you have a valid gateway selected. If using the CG150, make sure that you're not using a virtual gateway. And make sure that you have the correct protocols activated. At a minimum, make sure that the plus one protocol is selected. These settings can all be found in the communications menu. You might also want to try different ports on your desktop or laptop and try to avoid using a docking station port. Once you're connected, the system should immediately scan and display a list of any plus one devices that it finds on the CAN bus at startup. You can also initiate a scan by pressing F8. Click on the plus sign to see information about the device such as hardware information like the part number and manufacture date, software information, for instance the name of the currently active application, which HWD version was used when developing it and when it was compiled, and history information such as the last time someone connected to the device with the service tool. You can copy the information on connected ECUs by doing a right click on System Information and then Copy ECU List to Clipboard. One of the essential functions of the service tool is to download applications to the device, be it a controller, a display, or any other Plus One programmable ECU. You can do this by selecting File Download from the File menu or by typing Control D and then selecting the application. Application files normally have an LHX file extension. You can also double click on an LHX file directly in Windows Explorer which will open the service tool and initiate a download. The service tool is smart enough to prevent you from downloading an inappropriate application to a device. For instance, you wouldn't be able to download an MC18 application to an MC50 controller. 
Even a wrong model number will prevent download. However, if there are multiple valid candidates for download on the CAN bus, you have to choose the destination at download time. If you have multiple valid candidates for download and you want to minimize the chance of mixing up the device in the application, you can do this by using application types in your program. If the application type of the new program is different from that which is currently on the controller, the service tool will force you to confirm the download before proceeding. Another way to ensure that a specific application is downloaded to a specific controller is to use System Downloads or MLHX files. Search the videos or use our user manual for more information on application types and system downloads. After download, the service tool is also used to view what's going on in your program on the controller or display. You can do this on log pages. To create a log page, you first have to verify that you're in design mode. Select design mode in the view menu. If it's grayed out, you might be using an unlicensed version of the service tool. You need an express or professional license for the service tool in order to create new pages. Right-click on the Log Pages field and create a new basic page, giving it an appropriate name. Double-click on the page to edit it. Add a row for every signal value that you want to monitor, using the icons at the top of the page. You can only monitor 10 signals at a time in a basic log page, but there's no limit on advanced pages. You'll see that the signal values from the device API are automatically available to be displayed in the log page. In addition, you can monitor any intermediate signal values in your program to which you've added a checkpoint. Checkpoints are used during debugging of your program to see what values the program is generating. API signal values and checkpoints can be integrated into diagnostic pages which allow you or a technician in the field to see how your program is behaving. Values can be displayed as integer values, as well as in bar graph or oscilloscope form. We mentioned the difference between design and normal mode earlier. Another difference is that in design mode, you have to click the Start Log icon to start displaying live signal values. In normal mode, the values will start displaying right away. Also notice that signal values are displayed real-time in the service tool windows, but that the icons at the top allow you to also store them in a file where they can be played back at a later time or exported to a CSV file for analysis. Signal values are updated according to the logging period. At the bottom of the service tool, we can see both the requested and actual logging period in milliseconds. You can change the requested log period by hitting F9 or selecting Change Log Period in the Log menu. Values for parameters stored in non-volatile memory in your program or entered through Set Value or Set Pulse components can be adjusted through the Basic Parameters page. Right-click on Parameter Pages and select New Parameter Page Basic. Double-click on the Parameter Page to enter Edit Mode. In the drop-down list, you'll see the names of all the program parameters to which you have access rights. When selected and added to the page, the initial maximum and minimum values will correspond to the maximum and minimum values for the signal's data type. The max and min can be adjusted.
To see the value currently contained in the parameter, hit F2, click on the Upload icon, or select Upload in the Parameter menu. To change the value, change the value on the Diagnostic or P1D page, and then hit F4, click the Download icon, or use the Parameter drop-down menu, and select Download. Both the basic log and basic parameter page display primarily in simple tabular form. The advanced pages, however, allow you to place logged signals and parameters at will on the page, changing their formatting and adding design elements like photos. You can also hide elements under certain conditions, change fonts and colors, embed documents, and generally make more attractive, understandable diagnostic pages for technicians. There are too many options for the advanced pages to go into here, so once again, look for videos or check out our user manual. One last word about licensing since we receive frequent questions about it. As mentioned earlier, you do not need a service tool license in order to download an application or to use an existing diagnostics page to view or change parameter and signal values. You do need one, however, to do more advanced things. For instance, to design new diagnostic pages, you will need either a professional, express, or trial license. See this address to find out which functionalities require which licenses. This has been a quick introduction to the Plus One Service Tool. The Service Tool allows you to download new guide applications to a programmable ECU, like a controller or display, to view signal values within the application, and to monitor and adjust parameter values in the program. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum at plusoneforum.danfoss.com or contact the Plus One Help Desk at plus one help desk, P L U S plus sign, the digit one, help desk at danfoss.com. Thank you for your attention.